IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. And if you're wondering, that falls into the network layer of the OSI model. So first let's touch upon IPv4. That is in double dotted notation. We have four numbers separated by three periods producing a IPv4 address. Now, one thing to note here is it is a 32-bit value produced by four sets of eight bits. Those eight bits each produce the final value there. There is something called network prefix, which is basically what this slash B represents, and that is a address block within subnetting. That falls into CIDR notation. We'll get into that in a different video. IPv6 also follows that same network prefix, and again, we'll cover that in a different video. So IPv4 addresses, there are a total of around 40 billion addresses. And remember, almost every connected device on a network is going to need one of those IPv4 addresses. So as you can imagine, we ran out, which is how IPv6 came to play. And that's essentially our solution to creating a larger address pool. Now, there are a few protocol improvements with IPv6, but the main benefit is more available IP addresses. Now, taking a look at support, there's something called dual stack support, which basically means if you don't have IPv6, we always have an IPv4 fallback. Uh, that'd be for like a server or a device or something of that nature. Now, IPv6 is represented by eight 16-bit values. And these values are represented in hexadecimal. So these are not letters, they're hexadecimal values. Now, one thing to note when you see this is you might come across colon zero colon or just colon colon. All that's saying is that's just a shortening of four zeros. It's just a way of basically shortening the IP6 address. So if you ever see it where it just has a block and then there's a few colons there, you can just imagine those are filled with zeros. All right, everybody, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned something. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned.